If you're new to slow stitching and you're looking for help and ideas, you came to the right place. Today I'm going to go over two different ways to create a fabric collage. I'm going to talk about options for stitching and go in depth on choosing colors to complement your patchwork. I'm going to talk about how to test colors and different ways to approach slow stitching your fabric collage. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. So the first collage method involves using a base. I'm using felt here, but you could also use fabric. The size of the felt that I'm using is about three inches by seven inches. And I've gathered together some small scraps of fabric and I've pulled out this one that has this sort of orangey color, golden, yellow colors, and this beautiful pink. And this is the fabric that I'm going to use to inspire all of the others. So it's good to pick one fabric and work from there. So it's a little big for the piece that I'm working on, so I'm going to cut it. And I'm probably gonna move this around as I go, but I'm placing it on my base and then I'm bringing out some other fabrics to see if they match. So I have this piece of dark teal with dark green. And I have these other fabrics that have pink in them and the pinks are a very good match to the pink in the fabric I'm working from. So I'm pulling out a bunch of those and seeing which ones I like. Here's a green that I'm pulling out and I'm seeing that it's not really a match. There's another green and I don't feel like they're really gonna work here in this piece. So I'm sticking more with the turquoise shades. So I have a light and a dark shade there and they seem to be working really well with the fabric that I'm using. So I'm narrowing it down now. I'm liking some of the background of this piece. I'm gonna cut it down to be smaller. It has red orange shades. It also has this dark teal color. So it's matching with both of my other fabrics. There's something in there that's tying them all together. So I'm bringing out some other fabrics. Got that lighter teal. It has some sort of purpley pink shades on it. And it's quite a bit lighter than the other colors. So I like the contrast of the dark and the light. I keep trying to bring in a lighter shade in the pinks to see which one works. I found one here with this pink and these sort of leaf shapes. So now I'm thinking about the shape of the scrap as well as the colors in it. I have another piece here that's matching that sort of orange golden color. I'm bringing that in. I'm looking at bringing that dark teal color with the green into another spot. So I'm bringing it over to the side. I'm going to trim off this pink and I'm going to slip some of it underneath that teal color. And so now I'm at a point where I've covered all of my base. I'm liking the collage that I've made. So I'm bringing out my applique pins and I'm pinning down all the little pieces of fabric. You could use regular sewing pins for this. Both of them would work. And once everything is pinned down, I'm gonna take another step and baste everything with thread. This isn't necessary. You could leave the pins in and begin your sewing without doing the basting. One of the things I like to do is to get those sharp pins out of the piece as soon as I can. So I'm taking my regular sewing thread and stitching down all of these pieces. So I knot my thread at the end and I begin stitching down every piece of patchwork. I take small stitches on the front and larger stitches on the back and I move my way around until every piece is secured and then I remove all the pins. So here's what it looks like. My first length of thread has gone across the piece and there's still a little bit along the top that I haven't stitched. So I'm gonna get a new length of thread and finish stitching everything down. And I'm pulling out the last of my applique pins and now everything is stitched in place. I still have wiggle room with the patchwork, but it's not gonna move much. And now I'm gonna show a second method for creating a collage. And that's where you start with a piece of fabric that becomes part of your piece that's going to be seen through the other pieces of patchwork. So I have this piece 
of a yellow green. It's a beautiful olive color and it's a thin fabric, a thin cotton, and I think it's going to be a really nice base. I'm working with a piece of felt and again, you don't have to do that. You can work on batting. You can also work on a piece of fabric. So I'm laying this piece on top of my felt. It's just a little bit bigger on all sides, which is fine. And it kind of sticks to the felt. And now I'm gonna start pulling out fabrics. And since I'm already working with this olive green, the fabrics that I choose are going to be ones that I feel match with that color. So the process is the same where I'm going to pull out fabrics and see what colors I think work well. This is a different shape than what I was working on before. So that's gonna make my decisions slightly different because the shape also affects your eye and the way that you see how all the fabrics work together. So I have this piece of orange that's really saturated and vibrant and I'm really liking it. And I'm pulling out some other fabrics in those same sort of tones. I'm also bringing in the pinks that I had before and seeing what I think of that. And I'm bringing in some greens and some turquoise shades. So these are the ones that I'm liking so far. This orange for a contrast and these turquoise shades. I'm also bringing out some earth tones. This one has this deep burgundy color and these browns and beiges and I'm really liking the way that it's working with this olive green. So I'm cutting a piece off and putting that on and seeing what I think of it. I don't have a plan about what I want this to be. I'm just seeing what happens as I layer the fabrics and I pull them up against each other. This is a heavier fabric, this one that has the burgundy. But because I'm placing it on top of this very thin cotton, I'm not worried about having too many thicknesses of fabric. And even putting this striped green on top of the burgundy, there's something about it that I'm liking. I'm bringing back that orange. And I also have this rusty color with ochre shades. And the orange is contrasting and bringing the rest of the colors alive. There's something about it that I like. So I'm cutting some small pieces and I'm gonna place them right on the green just to see what I think about it. I'm bringing in some other shades some yellow, some oranges, some red, some pinks. And I'm seeing that that red of that poppy flower, while it looks nice on the green itself, it doesn't necessarily go with that burgundy shade. I'm just testing here to see what I like. I'm settling on these colors, not necessarily the placement of them, but the colors themselves I'm really enjoying. I'm bringing out some more blues to see if there's any more blue shades that I like that maybe I can bring into the upper area of the piece. Got a bright blue, I've got a light blue. Then I pull out this piece of silk. This is a little strip of sari silk and it's kind of wrinkled and folded. I see that it actually has a shade really similar to the oranges. It's a little subtler. It's a little bit more muted than that bright, bright orange. And that gets me really excited because I was thinking about a blue and I already had the orange in mind. So I'm going to iron this piece of silk and flatten it out just to see what I think of the color match and the texture match. So I'm removing the orange pieces that I had initially had on. I'm bringing that blue sort of peachy coral orange strip of silk on there and I'm really liking it. I have options about which orientation I want to place this. I can cut a small piece but for now I think what I'm going to do is cut a strip that's the length of this piece and I can always cut it down smaller later if I want to. My eye is drawn down to this striped piece and the burgundy behind it, and I'm feeling like it's a little big. The burgundy strip is a little big, so I'm going to trim it down, make it a little bit thinner, so that scale is a bit better to me. And I'm gonna bring back in this blue and coral color, and I'm liking the way that that's looking. So without a plan, it seems to me that this is turning out to look almost like a landscape. And this is because I've started with this solid piece in the background. 
that I'm building it out in a different way than I did with the first piece. Now looking at this piece of sari silk in the top, I have options. I can leave it flat like it is. If I bring out the other little scrap I have, you can see folded up. It gives me ideas about the options I have about folding and unfolding or refolding the piece that I've ironed. So I'm folding that top part back down a bit, over top some of that coral, and I like the scale of that a bit better. And I think it's time to baste all of these pieces down. So I'm using the same method as before. I'm not actually using the applique pins this time because I don't feel like I need them. I'll be able to secure these pieces down with just stitching. So now I have two very different pieces of fabric collage and I'm ready to begin stitching on them. So the options for stitching are multiple. And I'm just gonna cover some basic ones that I think will work with these two pieces of collage. So here I have my go-to threads, and these are the threads that I can use without having to worry about matching colors. I have a white and a black, and an off-white and a gray. These are the six-stranded embroidery floss, and I also have pearl cotton. This black one is a size 12. It's about the thickness of two strands of the six-stranded embroidery floss. And then I also have the pearl cotton size 8, which is thicker. It's a beautiful twisted thread that works well for slow stitching. If you saw my previous beginner's video, which I'll link here in the description, this is one of the pieces from that video where I had done slow stitching in different colors, mostly in red tones. So it doesn't have to be black, white, or gray. You can choose one color and that one color stitched over an entire piece will act to unify. And here, I think that red worked really well. So this piece is a similar type of collage, similar in shape and the number of pieces of fabric. And looking at the colors here, I could very well choose a turquoise color. I could choose a pink color, but another option here, we're talking about not worrying about having the right color floss or matching, would be black or white. In this piece, instead of using a white, I would more likely choose this off-white color because some of those colors exist in the background fabrics. I could use black. I also could use a really dark brown if I had it. What if you have a collection of floss and you want to pull that out and see what will match? I'm going to show the process that I use for that. So I'm going to bring out my trays of colored floss. I have two of them. First, I'm going to bring out this one. And this one has some yellows and oranges and pinks and purples and grays. And before I start, I want to mention that if you're getting started in slow stitching and you're building a collection or modifying a collection of embroidery floss, I have a guide that's a free download if you sign up for my micro newsletter. You can go to my website and you will get a link to a download of my 30 essential floss color list. And these are suggestions for colors that you could pick up if you want to have a rainbow of options. So I'm gonna place my collage right on top of this tray. I can move it around and see what colors are jumping out at me, what ones really seem to match. So I'm looking first for a matching pink. So I pull out a color that my eye seems to think is a match. It's not always 100% accurate, so I can hold it up against different areas of the piece to see if it really is a good match. And then I can choose a darker or a lighter shade of that same color to give myself options for stitching. So these two shades I like, they're matching with the fabrics that are on there. And now I'm gonna look at my orange and yellow shades. Now my other tray has some more of my orangey yellows, the ones that tend towards the ochres and the browns. So I'm bringing that out to compare to see if there's a color that I think is gonna work well with those golden colors. So I'm thinking that I'm going to find this color in my other tray, so I'm switching them here. I'm going to turn around my collage and put that fabric right up against the colors that are there, and that's helping me choose a color that I think will be a good match. 
So I'm pulling this one out and look at that. That's a really nice match. So I don't feel with yellows that I want a darker and a lighter at this point. I've got my two shades of pink and I've got this gold and yellow color. And now I'm gonna to turn to looking at these greeny blue colors, these turquoise colors. So well, here's one that matches the lighter shade fairly closely and going darker. That's a nice contrast and that color can be found in some other spots. And I can even pull out a darker shade to see how that's looking against those darkest green shades, a deep, deep teal. And I'm finding some good matches there. So now I'm pulling out my second collage and I'm gonna go through the same process. I have greens to match as well as that coral color and the burgundy. Here's an olive green that can be found in the striped fabric and it seems to match quite well with my background color. So what I'm looking for here is a color that's gonna work with everything. So I found this lighter green that's a nice match for the background. And so I'm using that as the basis to choose a darker green. And I could even go darker. I'm seeing that these two shades may not match as well. So I think sticking with this lighter green and this mid-tone darker green is gonna work at this point. And of course I can always come back and get darker, lighter shades. Now I'm looking at my blue-green colors. Now if I pull out this really bright turquoise, it does match, but it's also very, very bright. So that's one I could use if I really want a contrasting color. And this one is more muted, and it seems to match with that blue on the top and the striped fabric. So this choice is subtler, and I feel like that's what I want for this piece and I pull out a darker shade that also goes well, and it's also a more subtle color, not as bright. Now I'm gonna switch back to my other tray, and I'm gonna look for these burgundy colors and the coral color. When I unwind some of this burgundy, I can see that it is a nice match, and so now I want a lighter shade, and there's a beautiful shade of coral and it goes with the fabric and it goes with the darker shade that I've chosen. So to recap, I've chosen three shades of turquoise, two shades of pink, and a golden yellow shade for this piece of patchwork. And that's a really nice place to start. And for my other piece of patchwork, I've chosen a dark coral and a light coral, two shades of a more muted turquoise, and two greens that are in the olive family. So I feel like these colors are a really good place to start. So an optional step in slow stitching is to stitch around each piece of patchwork to secure it down and to add color and texture. You don't have to do this, but I usually choose to. So I'm starting with this yellow and I'm going to stitch around starting up at the edge. Your choice here when you're stitching around each piece of patchwork is to match colors or to use contrasting colors. And they both give really different effects. There's not a right and a wrong choice. And it's really fun to experiment. You can even use some of one color and some of another. It doesn't have to be uniform. This is a place to really play and have fun and use your creativity and express yourself. So you can see my progress here with this golden yellow color. In some spots, it's really showing up, particularly over on the left here with this dark teal color. And up against the pink, it's less noticeable. And of course, when it's matching, it's even less noticeable, but it's still there and it's adding texture. I'm going to bring out my pinks and I'm gonna hold them up against the patchwork to see where it blends in and where it adds contrast. That's a good way to get some ideas about what color you want to stitch where. Again, it's a place to experiment and to play. So I'm going to go around with different colors and all these pieces of patchwork until this step is completed. So here you can see the difference where I've stitched with that golden yellow color and with the pink. 
Another benefit of doing this is that it secures down the edges of all your patchwork so that when you come back to do some slow stitching, you're dealing with a fabric that's more uniform. So now I'm ready to do some slow stitching. I could choose one of the colors from this piece, either a pink or a turquoise, or I could choose a black or a white. And there's no wrong choice. You just take your floss and hold it up against your piece and see what you feel like doing. Just test everything out. So what I like to do is unroll some floss and I lay them across my piece and I have a really good look at them. Another thing that you can do to test out which color you want to use is to take a picture and convert that picture to black and white. Most phones have this feature. It's a filter and you can choose the mono selection and it will change your picture to black and white. So I have my selection of flosses laid out across my patchwork and I've taken a picture. So here's what it looks like. Some colors are fading into the background. Some colors are standing out. And so depending on the effect that I want, that will help me decide on a floss choice. In this case, I'm really liking the way that the black looks. So what I'm doing is I'm moving it to another section of the patchwork and I'm gonna take one more photograph just to be sure that this is what I want. So here's my second picture with my black and it's really standing out. And that's the effect that I think I want with this piece. So I'm gonna do my slow stitching today in black. But again, there's no wrong choice. Any of these colors would look really good. One thing about using black and white thread on a patchwork is that it can give some really interesting effects. Here's an example where I have stitched white over a colorful background and black over a colorful background. You can see here the background is black and the bird is white. And you can see how different that they look. And I flip it over and I've done the opposite. White is in the background and the bird is black. So depending on what you're looking for and what pleases your eye, you could choose black and white and get some really interesting effects. I think they're both beautiful. Now what if I had chosen one of the colors instead of black and white? What if I had chosen a color that blends really well? One that didn't really show up as much in that black and white photo. Here's an example of using matching tones in a background. In this piece, I've used white, I've used a matching golden color, and I've also used some of that pink purple tone. And you can see the different effects. They're all beautiful, they're all different, and there isn't really a wrong choice. And using the more subtle choice here in the background, it really has made this bird stand out. So it really depends on what effect you're looking for in your stitched piece. I think both black and white would go really well on this stitched piece. The white would make the patchwork color stand out even more, and the black is a bolder look that's going to make all the colors sing individually while also unifying them. So I could use my six stranded floss here in black, or I could use my pearl cotton size 12. I would use two strands of the black floss or one strand of my pearl cotton size 12. Both would work really well here. Here's two strands of the pearl cotton on the top and the pearl cotton size 12 below it. Very, very similar. So either one is fine. Now I'm just gonna begin my slow stitching. I'm gonna do lines in different directions and I'm gonna cover my entire piece. I go into this in more detail in my other beginner video and there's a link in the description where I go over a couple of different ways to create these stitches. One of the things to keep in mind when you're stitching are the direction of your patchwork versus the direction of your stitching. So here I've made some stitching lines in different directions. It's very similar to this piece where I've stitched in the red tones. It's nice to change up the directions of your stitches, but it's not necessary. You could stitch in one direction over the entire piece and it would also be beautiful. So just do whatever you feel like and it's going to look great. 
So here's my entire piece stitched in black. You can see the effect. It's darkened everything. It's made the colors really stand out. And I'm really happy with the way that this has turned out. With my other piece, I'm thinking about going in a different direction and using the colored floss that I've chosen to do my slow stitching. And because it looks like a landscape to me, I think I'm gonna take a different approach. And the completion of this piece is gonna be the topic of a future video. So sometimes the patchwork that you create gives you ideas about the stitching that you wanna do. And you should feel free to let the ideas flow and not have a fixed idea about how you should stitch a piece. I hope that you found this video helpful on your journey in creating your own fabric collage for slow stitching. Feel free to ask questions in the comments and I'll be there to answer. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, happy stitching.